When we thought about scaling up iPlay, we knew there were lots of talented, enthusiastic and experienced PE teachers in New South Wales. We thought we could get those teachers, train them up to be iPlay mentors, and then these mentors would train the school teachers. Full of confidence, we went along to see one of our best mentors roll out iPlay in our very first school. And we never expected what we saw. The session totally went off the rails. It meandered around our learning points without really nailing any of them. We started to get nervous. If this was going to be a sign of things to come, we'd never be able to have an impact at scale. Were we wasting our time trying to go much bigger than a couple of schools that we could manage ourselves? Then we happened on a few ideas. The mentors are really important for supporting teachers, providing feedback and helping them move through the program. But are they the best people for explaining all the concepts in the program? It's also expensive for long mentor workshops to scale up. If we use workshops to cover all the content for teachers, they need to take lots of time away from class and we need to pay for the mentor's time. Instead, what if we used videos to teach the content? We could use those videos in the workshops to keep the conversations on track, and we could also use them online to allow the teachers to learn at their own pace in their own time. We thought we could use videos just as training wheels, as an addition for the mentors that might help keep them upright. What we didn't expect is that the videos became the bike. They were what helped us take the program a lot further with a whole lot less effort. The reason for this is that the videos allowed us to craft messages that stick, messages that people actually remembered. And to do this, we used a lot of the ideas from Chip and Dan Heath's book, Made to Stick. They cover a series of six principles that they call the success principles. The first principle is to make the message simple. There are a whole host of multimedia learning principles that help make things simple. The principles we used were the ones that were shown to improve learning from meta-analyses of experimental studies. So we really tried to use top quality evidence. I won't have time to go through all of these here, but let's have a look at one example, the multimedia effect. This principle shows that if you put too many words on a slide, it can be really distracting. And instead, if presenters use pictures to accompany their voice, people learn better. It's a really simple change, but it's hard to implement when scaling up an intervention. Mentors rely on the slides for their prompts, as I'm sure most of you do when you're giving lectures or presentations. And if we took all the words off the slides for the mentors, we'd be more likely to see one go rogue or another workshop go totally off the rails. But with videos, this is really easy. As you've seen from this video so far, it's easy for me to talk with a few key points coming up and without distracting you with extra words. This links to the next success principle, make it unexpected. The principle says that we shouldn't just present content that people already know. Instead, we should try to correct a misconception or raise a question that the audience wouldn't already know the answer to. Let me give you an example. One of our first principles is that PE is more engaging when teachers start the lesson well. Let us show you how we taught this by raising some questions and presenting some common teacher misconceptions. Research shows that the first five minutes of a lesson are the most important for establishing tone and student learning of that lesson. So how do you begin a physical activity lesson? Once I have the students organised, I usually get them warmed up by telling them to do a lap of the oval. I get them to do a warm up lap, have a stretch and then talk about the plan for the lesson. Alright, so we're going to sit these guys all down, we're going to wait for the year fours and then organise what we're going to do. This is the way many teachers start their classes. So why do we do it this way? I think warming up is important to prevent injuries and to get their heart rates up. I don't want things to be too chaotic at the start, so I find a proper warm up keeps them organised. So if I'm honest, I don't really like taking PE. I'm just going to take my time and just try to keep the kids as calm as I can. But what are the children thinking? And backwards, to lunch. This is so boring. All right, now remember, we stretch our legs by pushing. Oh, our legs. when are we going to start? What if there were a way of starting the lesson that didn't bore both you and the students? We've established in this video, we presented misconceptions that we would eventually bust, like that kids need to stretch to prevent injuries. We also raised questions that we think the teachers want to know, like how to start a lesson that doesn't bore everybody. Mentors could ask these questions in workshops, but addressing misconceptions in this way is more effective when we can get footage of teachers saying the things that teachers think, but might not want to say. It makes the solution seem more unexpected, which helps make those solutions stick. Now, notice how it's clearer what we mean by unexpected when I showed you exactly what we did in a video and gave you some concrete examples about how to do it yourself. It's easier for someone to learn when they have concrete examples before learning a more abstract principle. This is the next idea for helping make a message stick, make it concrete. It means to use specific language and specific examples that people can easily understand. Afterwards, you can help them learn the more abstract idea. Mentors can try to use concrete examples in their workshops, but it can be hard for them to show actual demonstrations from real PE lessons. So again, with videos, we were able to use footage of lessons done well and lessons done poorly. 
The videos could also be more credible, which is the next success principle. Messages are usually more believable when the people who present the ideas are believable. Using videos, we did this in two ways. We used world experts to present the science and general ideas, and then we used a relatable teacher to give concrete examples of them implementing the ideas. It'd be great if the professors on our team could go to every workshop at every school to talk about what they know. With videos, they can. We filmed them talking about their expertise, meaning they spent an hour or so in front of the camera, but then they were able to influence the teachers at every single school. But sometimes, the opinion of an expert is less relatable and actually less credible than the opinion of someone similar to us. As a result, we told the stories of teachers implementing each idea to show how easy it was for them to do. These allowed us to tell engaging stories, which is the next success principle. With the videos, we could use the story of a teacher transforming their classroom to motivate the audience that they could do it themselves. These stories had one added benefit. They helped us tap into emotion, and this is the final of the success principle. As academics, emotion feel like a problem rather than a solution. Emotional reasoning is often biased reasoning, and we're often trained in rational thinking and how to make inferences from data designed to remove that influence of emotion. But as Hemingway showed, even short stories can be very emotive. Emotions move people, even rational people like us academics. And while we didn't do this as well as Hemingway, we tried to channel emotions that many teachers face. We used videos to try to empathise with these emotions and tried to galvanise hope for the future by helping teachers see simple strategies that work. In the same light, we hope this video gives you hope for your own success in the future. By applying these simple principles in your own intervention, you can reach thousands of people with as big an impact as if you were the one talking to each person yourself.